Hi, here we are for another JavaScript discussion, and uh, I've been working on this to-do app for uh, two videos so far, and I thought maybe we'd add a couple more features. Um, so right now, uh, we have a pretty simple app, you know, it just displays a bunch of items here in the browser, and um, essentially, you know, I've I've already added the item, so when I look at, um, you know, main.js here, you can see... Uh, you know, at the bottom, I have a function here that adds items to my to-do list, and then, you know, we display them all on the screen with this uh, list to-dos, right? Um, so that's pretty good, but uh, maybe we need a way to add items to the to-do list through our web page ra rather than just adding them here, you know, kind of hard coding them into the into the, the document, right? So why don't we do this? Let's go back to our HTML document here. And you can see I've got, uh, you know, I've got the body tag here. And it's got, you know, kind of two elements in it, really. It's got this UL, which is, you know, where we display the to-do items. And then it's got some JavaScript at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is maybe make a form at the top here. So I'm going to say form. And maybe we'll give the form an ID. Right, that way we can identify it. So we'll say, you know, add to do form. How about that? That's a pretty good ID name. And then uh, maybe in here we need to have um, we need to have something like an input here, so you can type in the name of a to do. Right. So we'll say type uh, text, and then uh, we need a submit button too. Maybe I'll do this. I'll say input um, type submit. So we'll just keep this simple and old school there. I just put a paragraph in there to kind of organize these guys a little bit, right? So anyway, so there we go, right? And, uh, you know, this input here, if we're going to grab the text out of this to create a new to-do, because this will be the name of the to-do, we better give this an ID so we can identify it, right? So we'll say to-do name. How about that, right? And uh, so that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at what it looks like on our page. Oh, so there's our input. There's a submit button, right? Um, I have a little bit of trouble because you'll notice as soon as I click the submit button, the page sort of flashes and really what's happening is it's refreshing, right? So it's reloading the page. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to add a little JavaScript to prevent that reloading and then we'll also grab the name and create a to-do item, okay? So uh, let's get started with that. Let's go back to our main JS. And I think what I'll do is I'll remove all of this stuff for right now, okay? So now we've just got our list to-dos, get to-do, remove to-do, add new to-do, right? And to-do object, right? And so at the bottom here, what we'll do is we'll say... Um, We'll use the jQuery selector, and we'll get, um, what is it, add to do form, okay? And we'll add an event listening for the sub submit event message, right? So we'll add a function listening for the submit event. And, um, you know, this will be the function here that is executed. And, you know, this function will receive an event object, right? So anytime we have a listener listening for an event, these functions always receive an event object. And this event object is important, especially for us in this case, because the event object allows us to call prevent default, okay? And this prevents default behavior, Okay, and that's important because if we refresh the page, it reloads all of our JavaScript. Okay, and that kind of like it breaks the the state of our program, right? And kind of starts it all over again fresh just when we click the button, right? So we don't want that. We want to make sure that the page loads once, and then all the actions that take take place in the page happen within that page without reloading it. Okay, so we're, they're just going to, like, we're going to have a create a uh, program that loads into the page the first time, and then it does things, like it runs in the page without, you know, actually having to reload itself, right? 
reloading will kind of reset everything, right? So anyway, so now we need to get the name of our to-do item. So what we'll do is we'll use jQuery. And um, what did I call that? I think I called it input name. No, I called it uh, to-do name, right? So we'll, we'll go here. I gave it an ID, so we'll use the hash mark. We'll say to-do name. And then to get the value from a text field, you're going to use .val in jQuery, okay? So now we've got the name of the new to-do item that you typed into the field. We might want to validate here. I'll leave a, you know, the dot, dot, dot there because maybe we'll add that later, right? And then what we want to do is we want to add a new to-do, right? So what we'll do is we'll say um, add new to-do with name, and here's the name, right? Hey, so our functions up here are really helping us out. We're writing very little code. We're just calling on a method with a descriptive name, and it does exactly what we expect, right? Um, and after we do this, we'll need to refresh the list so the to-do appears on the list, right? So maybe we'll call list to-dos again. We'll say list to-dos, okay? So maybe that'll work. Let's take a look. So we'll save it. Um, we'll go back to the browser here. We'll refresh it. You know, it always pays to have the inspector open in case there's an error, right? So we'll open the inspector and get the, um, actually I want this one, to get the console open, right? And then I'll type in something like eat breakfast. And then I'll click submit. Oh, look, it appears on the list, right? Let's type in um, tie shoes. There's tie shoes. Let's type in um, brush teeth. There we go. I just hit return that time, right? But it seems to be working pretty good. So um, let's go over that again just to make sure that everybody gets that, right? Um, so uh, what do we have here? So we have the to-do system that we created earlier. It's got an array of to-dos. This function represents a to-do in the list, okay? And that is going to be a JavaScript object with two properties, name and completed. And then we've got some methods to help us out working with to do. So add to do add creates a new to do object, and adds it to the to dos array. So it goes in the list. Remove to do would remove a to do from the list, right? Um, get to do at index will grab one of the to dos and return it to us. And list to do to dos um, lists all the to dos on the page. Okay. So anyway, so there's like a simple start there. Maybe we'll add one more feature here. You know, I like the to-dos, but right now they're just listed as name and completed, right? So um, when I look at them here, um, you know, it just says, you know, eat breakfast and then false, right? And that doesn't really read well. I'd like to put a graphic here to show whether the to-do is completed or, or not, right? <coughs> so... Right now, we'll, we'll leave the text here, right? Because essentially, like the look of everything, the appearance of all this is going to hinge on our, our style sheet. So the style sheet's going to do everything. So I don't really care exactly what this looks like. I just need the right elements on the page, right? The right tags, like an input field, a button, like to submit, right? A list to display things, right? And I need something here to represent the, the, the completed property, but it doesn't, you know, it could be almost anything, right? Um, what I do need, though, is, is where this is just plain text, I need a tag, okay? So when I look at what I have here, I'll inspect this, right? You can see I just have text. It says eat breakfast false, but this this is all a single tag, and in order for me to style or work with this false element, it needs to be its own tag, right? So what we'll do, and we'll probably handle this a little bit different later, but this completed value, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it inside of a span for now, okay? And then I'll close it here, okay? And, uh, and now, you know, we've got one tag to represent the entire row and then a span to represent the completed, okay? And you could give this a class name and you could put a class name on here, but I think we'll be okay because I have a, an ID up above so I can use the child or descendant selector to get to this list item or the span here, right? So we'll save that and then let's refresh our list here. So now I'll add some items. I'll just make it A and make another one, call it BBB, CCC, right? Okay. 
And then um, now you can see the false is there, but this time when I inspect it, right, it says span, right? Okay, so just because it has this tag around it here means that I can now, like I could do things with it. It's an element in the DOM, right? So it's part of the whole structure of the page. And, you know, we can apply a different style to this than what we have here. We could make this look like anything. We can put a picture in it, hide the text, you know. So there's a lot we can do as soon as we make this a tag. But remember, a key thing here is, is the, the appearance is going to hinge on the style sheet. It's all about the style sheet for the appearance. For the function and structure, you know, it, it really doesn't matter what it looks like. We just got to get the, the tags in there and get the basic functioning you know, doing the things that we want to do, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that's helpful.